Percy and the signal. Percy is a little green tank engine who works in the yard at the big station. He is a funny little engine and loves playing jokes. These jokes sometimes get him into trouble. Peep, peep, he whistled one morning. Hurry up, Gordon. The train's ready. Gordon thought he was late and came puffing out. Ha, 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 laughed Percy and showed him a train of dirty coal trucks. Gordon didn't go back to the shed. He stayed on a siding, thinking how to pay Percy out. Stay in the shed today, squeaked Percy to James. The fat controller will come and see you. James was a conceited engine. Ah, oh, he thought. The fat controller knows I'm a fine engine, ready for anything. He wants me to pull a special train. So James stayed where he was and nothing his driver and fireman could do would make him move. But the fat controller never came, and the other engines grumbled dreadfully. They had to do James's work as well as their own. At last an inspector came. Show a wheel, James, he said crossly. You can't stay here all day. The fat controller told me to stay here, answered James sulkily. He sent a message this morning. He did not, retorted the inspector. How could he? He's away for a week. Oh, said James. Oh. He came quickly out of the shed. Where's Percy? Percy had wisely disappeared. When the fat controller came back, he did see James. And Percy too. Both engines wished he hadn't. James and Gordon wanted to pay Percy out. But Percy kept out of their way. One morning, however, he was so excited that he forgot to be careful. I say, you engines, he bubbled. I have to take some trucks to Thomas's junction. The fat controller chose me specially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. More likely he wants you out of the way, grunted James. But Gordon gave James a wink. Ah, ah, yes, said James. Just so. You were saying, Gordon... James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals. But then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. Oh, of course not, he said. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, oh, thank you, James, said Percy airily. I know all about signals and he bustled off importantly. James and Gordon solemnly exchanged winks. Percy was a little worried as he set out. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. I know all about signals. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. He saw a signal just outside the station. Bother, he said. It's a danger. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks as they bumped into each other. Presently, the signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. He was surprised. Down means go, he thought, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know. It's one of those backing signals. How clever of me to find that out. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. But Percy wouldn't go forward, and his driver had to let him back in order to start at all. I am clever, thought Percy. Even my driver doesn't know about backing signals. And he started so suddenly that the truck screamed again. Whoa, Percy, called his driver. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested, and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained about signals that point up. Oh, dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they come and see us. But he was too late. Gordon swept by with the express and saw everything. 
The big engines talked about signals that night. They thought the subject was funny. They laughed a lot. Percy thought they were being very silly. Duck takes charge. Do you know what? asked Percy. What? grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Silly, said Gordon crossly. Of course I don't know what. If you don't tell me what what is, the fat controller says that the work in the yard is too heavy for me. He's getting a bigger engine to help me. Rubbish, put in James. Any engine could do it. He went on grandly. If you worked more and chattered less, this yard would be a sweeter, a better, and a happier place. Percy went off to fetch some coaches. That stupid old signal, he thought. No one listens to me now. They think I'm a silly little engine and order me about. I'll show 'em. I'll show 'em. He puffed as he ran about the yard, but he didn't know how. Things went wrong. The coaches and trucks behaved badly, and by the end of the afternoon, he felt tired and unhappy. He brought some coaches to the station, and stood panting at the end of the platform. Hello, Percy," said the fat controller. "You look tired." "Yes, sir. I am, sir. I don't know if I'm standing on my dome or my wheels." "Oh, oh you, you look the right way up to me," laughed the fat controller. "Cheer up. The new engine is bigger than you. I can probably do the work alone. Would you like to help build my new harbour at Thomas's Junction? Thomas and Toby will help." But I need an engine there all the time. Oh yes, sir. Thank you, sir," said Percy happily. The new engine arrived next morning. "What is your name?" asked the fat controller kindly. "Montague, sir. But I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir. But I like Duck better than Montague." "Good," said the fat controller. "Duck it shall be." Yeah, Percy, come and show Duck around. The two engines went off together. At first, the trucks played tricks, but soon found that playing tricks on Duck was a mistake. The coaches behaved well, though James, Gordon, and Henry did not. They watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. They whispered, "We'll have some fun." Quack. Quack! They wheezed as they passed him. Percy was cross, but Duck took no notice. I'll get tired of it soon, he said. Presently, the three engines began to order Duck about. Duck stopped. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? He asked. Yes, they do, answered Percy sadly. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it tonight. The fat controller had had a good day. There had been no grumbling passengers. All the trains had run to time, and Duck had worked well in the yard. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. He had just left the office when he heard an extraordinary noise. Bother! He said, and hurried to the yard. Henry, Gordon, and James were wishing and snorting furiously, while Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Stop that noise! He bellowed. No, Gordon. They won't let us in. Hissed the big engine crossly. Duck, explain this behaviour. Oh, beg pardon, sir. 
but I'm a great Western engine. We great Western engines do our work without fuss, but we are not ordered about by other engines. You, sir, are our controller. We will, of course, move if you order us. But begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I will be glad if you would inform these uh, engines that we only take orders from you. The three big engines hissed angrily. Silence! snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behaviour tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. They stopped suddenly when the fat controller turned on them. As for you, he thundered, you've been worse. You who made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway, and I give the orders. When Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. He did so easily. <laughs> Percy and Harold. Percy worked hard at the harbour. Toby helped, but sometimes the loads of stone were too heavy and Percy had to fetch them for himself. Then he would push the trucks along the quay to where the workmen needed the stone for their building. An airfield was close by, and Percy heard the aeroplane zooming overhead all day. The noisiest of all was a helicopter, which hovered, buzzing like an angry bee. Stupid thing, said Percy. Why can't it go and buzz somewhere else? One day, Percy stopped near the airfield. The helicopter was standing quite close. Hello, said Percy. Who are you? I'm Harold. Who are you? I'm Percy. What whirly great arms you've got. They're nice arms, said Harold, offended. I can hover like a bird. Don't you wish you could hover? Certainly not. I like my rails, thank you. I think railways are slow said Harold in a bored voice. They're not much use, and quite out of date. He whirled his arms and buzzed away. Percy found Toby at the top station, arranging trucks. I say, Toby, he burst out, that Harold, that stuck-up whirlybird thing, says I'm slow and out of date. Just let him wait. I'll show him. He collected his trucks and started off still fuming. Soon, above the clatter of the trucks, they heard a familiar buzzing. Percy, whispered his driver, there's Harold. He's not far ahead. Let's race him. Yes, let's, said Percy excitedly, and quickly gathering speed, he shot off down the line. The guard's wife had given him a flask of tea for elevenses. He had just poured out a cup when the van lurched and he spilt it down his uniform. He wiped up the mess with his handkerchief and staggered to the front platform. Percy was pounding along. The truck screamed and swayed while the van rolled and pitched like a ship at sea. Well, I'll be ding-dong-danged, said the guard. Then he saw Harold buzzing alongside and understood. Go it, Percy, he yelled. You're gaining! Percy had never been allowed to run fast before. He was having the time of his life. Hurry! 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 He panted to the trucks. We don't want to! We don't want to! They grumbled, but it was no use. Percy was bucketing along with flying wheels, and Harold was high and alongside. The farmer shoveled for dear life, while the driver was so excited he could hardly keep still. Well done, Percy, he shouted. We're gaining. 
We're going ahead! Oh, good boy! Good boy! Far ahead, a distant signal warned them that the wharf was near. Shut off steam, whistle, peep, peep, peep! Brakes guard, please! Using Percy's brakes too, the driver carefully checked the train's headlong speed. They rolled under the main line and halted smoothly on the wharf. Oh dear, groaned Percy. I'm sure we've lost. The farmer scrambled to the cab roof. We've won! We've won, he shouted, and nearly fell off in his excitement. Harold's still offering! He's looking for a place to land! Listen, boys, the farmer called. Here's a song for Percy. Said our old helicopter to our Percy, you are slow. Your railway is out of date and not much use, you know. But Percy with his stone trucks did the trip in record time. And we beat that helicopter on our old branch line. The driver and guard soon caught the tune, and so did the workman on the quay. Percy loved it. Oh, thank you, he said. He liked the last line best of all. Percy's promise. A mob of excited children poured out of Annie and Clarabelle one morning and raced down to the beach. They're the Vicar's Sunday School, explained Thomas. I'm busy this evening but the station master says I can ask you to take them home. Of course I will, promised Percy. The children had a lovely day, but at tea time it got very hot. Dark clouds loomed overhead. Then came lightning, thunder and rain. The children only just managed to reach shelter before the deluge began. Annie and Clarabel stood at the platform. The children scrambled in. Can we go home, please, station master? asked the vicar. The station master called Percy. Take the children home quickly, please, he ordered. The rain streamed down on Percy's boiler. Ugh! he shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Then he remembered. A promise is a promise, he told himself. So here goes. His driver was anxious. The river was rising fast. It foamed and swirled fiercely, threatening to flood the country any minute. The rain beat in Percy's face. I wish I could see, I wish I could see, he complained. They left a cutting and found themselves in water. Oh, my wheels, shivered Percy. It's cold. But he struggled on. Whoosh, he hissed. It's sloshing my fire. They stopped and backed the coaches to the cutting and waited while the guard found a telephone. He returned, looking gloomy. We couldn't go back if we wanted, he said. The bridge near the junction is down. The farman went to the guard's van, carrying a hatchet. Hello, said the guard. You look fierce. I want some dry wood for Percy's fire, please. They broke up some boxes, but that did not satisfy the farman. I'll have some of your floorboards, he said. What, my nice floor? grumbled the guard. I only swept it this morning. But he found a hatchet and helped. Soon they had plenty of wood stored in Percy's bunker. His fire burnt well now. He felt warm and comfortable again. <coughs> oh dear, thought Percy sadly. Harold's come to laugh at me. Boom! Something thudded on Percy's boiler. Oh! He exclaimed in a muffled voice. That's really too bad. 
He didn't throw things. His driver unwound a parachute from Percy's indignant front. Harold isn't throwing things at you, he laughed. He's dropping hot drinks for us. They all had a drink of cocoa and felt better. Percy had steam up now. Beep, beep, thank you, Harold, he whistled. Come on, let's go. The water lapped his wheels. Ugh, he shivered. It crept up and up and up. It reached his ash pan, then it sloshed at his fire. Oosh! Percy was losing steam, but he plunged bravely on. I promised. He panted. I promised. They piled his fire high with wood and managed to keep him steaming. I, I must do it, he gasped. I must. I must. I must. He made a last great effort and stood exhausted but triumphant on rails which were clear of the flood. He rested to get steam back, then brought the train home. Three cheers for Percy, called the vicar, and the children nearly raised the roof. The fat controller arrived in Harold. First, he thanked the men. Harold told me you were a wizard, Percy. He says he can beat you at some things, Percy snorted. But not at being a submarine, he chuckled. I don't know what you've both been playing at, and I won't ask. But I do know that you're a really useful engine. Oh, sir, whispered Percy happily. Percy takes the plunge. Sometimes Percy takes stone trucks to the other end of the line. There he meets engines from the other railway. One day, Henry wanted to rest in the shed, but Percy was talking to some tank engines. It was raining hard. Water swirled under my boiler. I couldn't see where I was going, but I struggled on. Ooh, Percy, you are brave. Well, said Percy modestly, it wasn't anything really. Water's nothing to an engine with determination. Tell us more, Percy, said the engines. What are you engines doing here? hissed Henry. This shed is for the fat controller's engines. Go away. Silly things, Henry snorted. They're not silly. Percy had been enjoying himself. He was cross because Henry had sent them away. They are silly, and so are you. Water's nothing to an engine with determination. Pah! Anyway, said cheeky Percy, I'm not afraid of water. I like it. He ran away singing... Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. Percy arrived home feeling pleased with himself. Silly old Henry, he chuckled. Thomas was looking at a board on the quay. It said, Danger. We mustn't go past it, he said. That's orders. Why? Danger means falling down something said Thomas. I went past danger once and fell down a mine. Percy looked beyond the board. I can't see a mine, he said. He didn't know that the foundations of the quay had sunk and that the rails now sloped downward to the sea. Stupid board, said Percy. For days and days he tried to sidle past it, but his driver stopped him every time. No, you don't he would say. Then Percy made a plan. One day at the top station, he whispered to the trucks, Will you give me a bump? 
when we get to the quay. The trucks were surprised. They had never been asked to bump an engine before. They giggled and chattered about it the whole way down. Whoa, Percy, whoa, said his driver, and Percy checked obediently at the distant signal. Driver doesn't know my plan, he chuckled. On, 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 <laughs> laughed the trucks. Percy thought they were helping. I'll pretend to stop at the station, but the trucks will push me past the board. Then I'll make them stop. I can do that whenever I like. If Percy hadn't been so conceited, he would never have been so silly. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust trucks. They reached the station, and Percy's brakes groaned. That was the signal for the trucks. Go on, go on, they yelled and surged forward together. They gave Percy a fearful bump and knocked his driver and farmer off the footplate. Ow, said Percy, sliding past the board. The day was misty, the rails were slippery, his wheels wouldn't grip. Percy was frantic. That's enough, he hissed. But it was too late. Once on the slope, he tobogganed helplessly down, crashed through the buffers, and slithered into the sea. You are a very disobedient engine. Percy knew that voice. He groaned. The foreman borrowed a small boat and rowed the fat controller around. P -p Please, sir, g get me out, sir. I I'm truly sorry, sir. No, Percy, we cannot do that till high tide. I hope it will teach you to obey orders. Yes, sir. Percy shivered miserably. He was cold. Fish were playing hide-and-seek through his wheels. The tide rose higher and higher. He was feeling his position more and more deeply every minute. It was nearly dark when they brought floating cranes, cleared away the trucks and lifted Percy out. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. So he was sent to the works next day on Henry's goods train. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. Did you like the water? No. I am surprised. You need more determination, Percy. Water's nothing to an engine with determination, you know. Ha <laughs> ha. Perhaps you'll like it better next time. But Percy is quite determined that there won't be a next time. Gordon Goes Foreign Lots of people travel to the big station at the end of the line. Engines from the other railway sometimes pull their trains. These engines stay the night and go home next day. Gordon was talking one day to one of these. When I was young and green, he said, I remember going to London. Do you know the place? The station's called King's Cross. King's Cross? snorted the engine. London's Euston. Everybody knows that. Rubbish, said Duck. London's Paddington. I know. I worked there. They argued till they went to sleep. They argued when they woke up. They were still arguing when the other engine went away. Stupid thing, said Gordon crossly. I've no patience. Stupid yourself, said Duck. London's Paddington. Paddington, do you hear? Stop arguing, James broke in. You make me tired. You're both agreed about something anyway. What's that? London's not Euston, laughed James. Now shut up.
Gordon rolled away, still grumbling. I'm sure it's King's Cross. I'll go and prove it. But that was easier said than done. London lay beyond the big station, at the other end of the line. Gordon had to stop there. Another engine then took his train. If I didn't stop, he thought, I could go to London. One day he ran right through the station. Another time he tried to start before the farmer could uncouple the coaches. He tried all sorts of tricks, but it was no good. His driver checked him every time. Oh dear, he thought sadly, I'll never get there. One day he pulled the express to the station as usual. His farmer uncoupled the coaches and he ran on to his siding to wait till it was time to go home. The coaches waited and waited at the platform, but their engine didn't come. A porter ran across and spoke to Gordon's driver. The inspector's on the platform. He wants to see you. The driver climbed down from the cab and walked over to the station. He came back in a few minutes looking excited. Hello, said the farmer. What's happened? The engine for the express turned over when it was coming out the yard. Nothing else can come in or out. They want us to take the train to London. I said we would if the fat controller agreed. They telephoned and he said we could do it. How's that? Fine, said the farmer. We'll show them what the fat controller's engines can do. Come on, said Gordon, let's go. He rolled quickly over the crossings and backed onto the train. It was only a few minutes before the guard blew his whistle, but Gordon thought it was ages. Come on! Come on! He puffed to the coaches. Come on! 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 We're going to town! We're going to town! sang the coaches. Slowly at first, then faster and faster. We're going to town! We're going to town! We're going to town! We're going to town! Gordon found that London was a long way away. Never mind, he said. I like a good long run to stretch my wheels. But all the same, he was glad when London came in sight. The fat controller came into his office next morning. He looked at the letters on his desk. One had a London postmark. I wonder how Gordon is getting on, he said. The station master knocked and came in. He looked excited. Excuse me, sir, have you seen the news? Not yet, why? Oh, just look at this, sir. The fat controller took the newspaper. Good gracious me, he said. There's Gordon. Headlines, too. Famous engine at London station. Police called to control crowds. The fat controller read on, absorbed. Gordon returned next day. The fat controller spoke to his driver and farmer. I see you had a good welcome in London. We certainly did, sir. We signed autographs till our arms ached. And Gordon had his photograph taken from so many directions at once that he didn't know which way to look. Good, smiled the fat controller. I expect he enjoyed himself, didn't you, Gordon? No, sir, I didn't. Why, ever not? London's all wrong, answered Gordon sadly. They've changed it. It isn't King's Cross anymore. It's St Pancras. Double header. The fat controller gave Gordon a rest when he came back from London. He told James to do his work. James got very conceited about it. You know, little Toby, he said one day, I'm an important engine now. Everybody knows it. They come in crowds to see me flash by. The heaviest train makes no difference. I'm as regular as clockwork. They all set their watches by me. Never late, always on time, 
That's me, says you, replied Toby cheekily. Toby was out on the main line. The fat controller had sent him to the works. His parts were worn. They clanked as he trundled along. He was enjoying his journey. He was a little engine, and his tanks didn't hold much water, so he often had to stop for a drink. He had small wheels, too, and he couldn't go fast. Never mind, he thought. The signalmen all know me. They'll give me plenty of time. But a new signalman had come to one of the stations. Toby had wanted to take Henrietta, but the fat controller had said, No! What would the passengers do without her? He wondered if Henrietta was lonely. Percy had promised to look after her, but Toby couldn't help worrying. Percy doesn't understand her like I do, he said. He felt thirsty and tired. He had come a long way. He saw a distant signal. Good, he thought. Now I can have a nice drink and rest in a siding till James has gone by. Toby's driver thought so too. They stopped by the water crane. His farman jumped out and put the hose in his tank. Toby was enjoying his drink when the signalman came up. Toby had never seen him before. No time for that, said the signalman. We must clear the road for the express. Right, said the driver. We'll wait in the siding. No good, said the signalman. It's full of trucks. You'll have to hurry to the next station. They've got plenty of room for you there. Poor Toby clanked sadly away. I must hurry. I must hurry, he panted. But hurrying used a lot of water, and his tanks were soon empty. They damped down his fire and struggled on, but he soon ran out of steam and stood marooned on the main line, far away from the next station. The farman walked back. He put detonators on the line to warn James and his driver. Then he hurried along the sleepers. I'll tell that signalman something, he said grimly. James was fuming when Toby's farman arrived and explained what had happened. My fault, said the signalman. I didn't understand about Toby. No, James, said his driver. You'll have to push him. What? Me? snorted James. Me? Push Toby and pull my train? Yes, you. Shan't. The driver, the farman, the passengers and the guard all said he was a bad engine. All right, all right, grumbled James. He came up behind Toby and gave him a bump. Get on, you, he said crossly. James's driver made him push Toby all the way back to the works. It serves you right for being cross, he said. James had to work very hard, and when he reached the work station, he felt exhausted. Some little boys ran along the platform. Coo, said one. The express is late. A double header, too. Do you know what I think? I think, he went on, that James couldn't pull the train, so Toby had to help him. Cool, said James, and disappeared in a cloud of steam. The Fat Controller's Engines One evening, Thomas brought his last train to the junction. He went for a drink. I'm going to the big station, he said to Percy and Toby. So are we, they answered. Do you know, Percy went on, I think something's up. Toby looked at the sky. Where? Down here, silly, laughed Thomas. How, asked Toby reasonably, can something be up when it's down? Look, said Thomas excitedly, look! 
Seven engines from the other railway were coming along the line. Hello, Ginty, whistled Percy. Hello, Pug. They're friends of mine, he explained. I don't know the others. Ginty and Pug whistled cheerfully as they puffed through the station. What is all this? asked Thomas. The fat controller's got a plan, answered his driver, and he's going to tell it to us. Come on. So they followed to the big station at the end of the line, where all the engines had gone. The fat controller was waiting for them there. The people of England, he said, read about us in the books, but they do not think that we are real. Shame, squeaked Percy. The fat controller glared. Percy subsided. So, he continued, I am taking my engines to England to show them. Hooray, 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 the engines whistled. The fat controller held his ears. Silence, he bellowed. We start the day after tomorrow at 8 a.m. Meanwhile, as these engines have kindly come from the other railway to take your place, you will show them your work tomorrow. Next day, as Annie and Clarabel were going to England too, Thomas and Ginty practised with some other coaches. Thomas was excited. He began boasting about his race with Bertie. I whooshed through the tunnel and stopped an inch from the buffers, like this. Crash! The buffers broke. No one was hurt, but Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned the fat controller. I'll send up some men, he said. But if they can't mend Thomas in time, we'll go to England without him. Next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on a truck, and Duck had pushed them into place behind Edward. Henrietta stood on a siding. The fat controller had called her a curiosity. I wouldn't dream of leaving you behind, he said. I'll fit you up as my private coach. She felt very grand. Gordon, James and Henry were in front. They whistled impatiently. The fat controller paced the platform. He looked at his watch. One minute more, he said, turning to the guard. Peep, 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 whistled Thomas and panted into the station. Annie and Clarabel twittered anxiously. We hope we're not late. It isn't quite eight. Thomas, said the fat controller sternly. I am most displeased with you. You nearly upset my arrangements. Thomas, abashed, arranged himself in the coaches behind Duck without saying a word. The fat controller climbed into Henrietta. The guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines whistled, Look out, England! Here we come! And the cavalcade puffed off. The engines stood side by side in a big airy shed. Hundreds of people came to see them and climbed in and out of their cabs every day. They liked it at first, but presently felt very bored and were glad when it was time to go. The people along their line put the flags out and cheered them home. We are glad to see you, they said. Those others did their best, but they don't know our ways. Nothing anywhere can compare with our fat controller's engines. <laughs> <laughs>